So part of my uh, Craigslist find, uh, this was given to me. It's some type of filter, some type of um, video filter, I believe. It has F connectors on the ends, uh, which is um, usually associated with televisions, um, 75 ohm uh, systems. And it's uh, very high quality, so it's probably something to do with cable TV or some, some type of some type of filter. Um, I don't know if you can see this on camera. Uh, I'll read it. Uh, Salisbury Engineering Incorporated uh, TB7-7-91.15 18-F X dash BPT dash TVR dash O one dash rev two serial number. Um, so because it says TVR sounds like it's television and BP sounds like bandpass. Um, so mm, nine one uh, nine one dot one five that. It sounds like maybe a frequency. Um, so anyway, uh, I thought we would uh, do two things today. Um, we would first uh, uh, measure it with a, uh, a nano VNA, and uh, then secondly, we'll measure it with an HP eighty nine twenty, and see how the two uh, see how the two compare. Um, I think I've. I think I've uh, done a filter sweep before on the Nano VNA, but uh, uh, this might be new to some people. Um, I'm going to um, put on some coax on the uh, Nano VNA, and we'll, we'll we'll calibrate it at the end of the coax. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out in, um, in internet land about. Uh, what happens if you measure antennas or other devices at the end of coaxes versus at the uh, removing the coax. And that comes uh, with an, a non-understanding of transmission lines and it gets complicated by antenna systems where the antenna uh, relies on the uh, length of, of coax cable coming in, not as a transmission line, but actually as a radiator. So there's a lot of very, very confusing things about transmission lines. Um, when you're measuring things like um, uh, scalar numbers, so a scalar number is something that doesn't have phase information. So uh, a return loss measurement or a VSWR does not have phase information. So um, it doesn't really matter uh, about some of the calibrations and some of the setups when you're not worried about phase information. Um, this is one of those cases where you don't need to know about phase information um, if you just want to sweep the filter characteristics of this thing. We're just going to be taking a look not at return loss but as transmission loss. Uh, so we're going to set set this thing up to use both ports of the VNA. Um, it's the S21 uh, measurement where we actually output on one of the connectors and we measure on the other connector. So uh, RF is coming out one and the measurement is going in the other. So we're just looking at transmission loss versus frequency. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, calibrate the VNA and hook up the uh, filter and see what it says. All right, I'm going to be forming a calibration. Uh, calibrate reset. And then I'm going to hit calibrate. And we will do an open. I have a video on making this little uh, calibration tool here. And then we will do the short. And we will do the load.
We will do the isolation. And we'll do the through. So the through is going to be important here because this is exactly the measurement we're going to be using. Instead of having a short here, I'm going to be putting in the filter. So we'll do the through. We are done. Let's go ahead and save that in one. All right. So uh, we now have a trace along the uh, along the top. I know it's going to be hard to see. Um, let's see if this thing will focus. Hello. Come on, you can focus. I guess it can't. Uh, Let's put it, there we go. So we're going to have a line up at the top. And that just says that we don't have any return loss. I mean, uh, transmission loss in the system. And when we open the circuit, um, our traces disappeared off the bottom of the screen. All right. So. We are going to then take the filter. I didn't, I, I thought I had some 75 ohm adapters for F connectors, but I don't. A lot of people are now going to complain, hey, you're measuring a 75 ohm system with a 50 ohm device. You're not going to get right results, blah, 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 um, which is somewhat true. But uh, for just figuring out filter characteristics, it should be, should be fine to do to get a good idea what's going on. Let's see here, let's, all right. So what I did was uh, I put some, uh, I jammed a wire in the end so I can make contact I, and I twisted a connector uh, wire around the, uh, the uh, outside. I'm going to add, I'm gonna add some clip leads to my, uh, to my Nano. I'm gonna clip this on. And we'll do it. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I'll do this. We'll do this over here. And clip this on over here. All right. So now we need to get the camera to cooperate. There we go. So this filter uh, is a bit odd. Uh, it has uh, definitely a bandpass structure to it. And uh, this sweep is uh, centered at 90 megahertz and the uh, span is 50 megahertz. And you can see that we have this uh, kind of a crown looking thing. We have a, a, a three, three dips, uh, one in the center and then the two side ones with the, with the uh, excursions on the outside. So, the way that you get to this is um, a lot of people turn on their nano VNA and they say, well, I can't make that measurement because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. When you turn on the nano VNA, it comes up with a several measurements, but not the one you're interested in. So if you go to display, there's going to be traces and you can have four different traces. Now, the green one is the Smith charts and uh, the orange one is the return loss ones. And you want to have the blue one. Okay, so turn off the other ones. And so like, if this one's on, now you have the Smith chart in there and it's, and it's very confusing. So you go trace, oops, uh, let's see here, trace, green, off, turn that off. And then turn on the blue one and the blue one will, 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 will read over here. You wanna have uh, channel one log mag 10 dB. So um, channel one is this one over here. Most of the time you're using channel zero for things like return loss or SWR, things like that. But channel one is we're gonna output on channel zero and we're gonna come in on channel one. And so we wanna be looking at what channel one registers. And so that's, uh, uh, that's what we have here. So if we can uh, remember what that looks like, uh, we'll then go over to the HP uh, 8920, see if we get a similar result.
Okay, this is an HP uh, 8921. I think I said 8920. They're very, very similar instruments. This is an 8921A. Um, and we're using it as uh, a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. So that's another way to make the measurement. It's going to be outputting uh, frequencies and, it, and then it's going to be coming back around and going in, into a spectrum analyzer. But it's going to be performing the exact same measurement. And you can see that the shape is exactly the same as the Nano VNA. And it is the same measurement. Uh, there may be some differences in accuracy um, and differences in dynamic range of the two systems, but uh, they should give a very, very similar results. So you can see that uh, we're centered on 50, span of, uh, centered on 90, span of 50. We're getting the triple, the triple dips and uh, Looks very similar. So $50 versus, <laughs> oh, I don't know how much these things sold new. I think they were around $30,000 uh, when they were new. So I know this was quite a, kind of quick. Um, I do have a lot of videos on my channel about this instrument and how it works and how to use it. And I have a whole bunch of uh, videos on the Nano VNA, on how to calibrate it, how to do software upgrades, do all that other stuff. So um, I was quite quick assuming that those other uh, videos are something that you can watch. But I wanted to give you a comparison between the two as a measurement standpoint. Does the Nano VNA give an accurate measurement compared to a nice instrument?